open your Bibles to two places. Open your Bibles first to Romans 13. Romans 13, 11 through 14 is the text there that we're going to look at. But mark your place there. If you have a little ribbon, mark your place or uh, bookmark your place or hold your finger there and flip to another place or whatever. Um, and go to Mark. Mark chapter 14. Mark chapter 14. Okay? And while you guys are there, if you have your phones out, which a lot of you do, you know the drill. You can go ahead and share this. Um, this is, I, I can't wait for people to hear this message um, that he has laid on me. Hopefully I deliver it like he's laid it on me. Amen? Yes. <laughs> so um, we're continuing our sermon series. We just started it last week. Can anybody tell me what the sermon series is called? It's up there on the screen, so you should all be able to tell me that. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. It is time for us to wake up. Amen? Amen. Um, and I thought that as my alarm clock was going off this morning. Chris, it is time for you to wake up. Um, did I? No. But anyway, um, you guys found your place there? Okay. So to start this sermon, this sermon off, um, I want to give you a choice between two buttons two buttons okay and you're probably wondering what the heck are you talking about where are you going with this what buttons are you talking about um one of them is totally not real although i wish it was it is totally not real okay one of them the other one is very real and if you saw if you follow me if you're friends with me on facebook or on instagram you know what button i'm about to talk about okay <laughs> Um, because I posted something, and I just have to say this, I'm doing, I posted that as a, as kind of an experiment, kind of research, um, and I, I did it for like three reasons, really, and one of them is for this sermon example um, that I'm about to give you, but the other two reasons have to do more with like what you post out there on Facebook and stuff like that, and who reacts to what, um, and I'm just going to say I was overwhelmed at the response that I got um, when I posted something not Jesus-related, right? <laughs> uh, we need more response on Facebook to stuff that's Jesus related. I'm just going to say that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but anyway, I posted something on Facebook and got a good response about it. So the two buttons that I'm going to give you an option between, okay. If you have the choice to choose one of these two buttons for the rest of your life, that you could have one of these two buttons for the rest of your life, which button would you choose? Number one is the easy button. You guys ever seen, you seen that commercial? Um, I think it was Staples, wasn't it? Uh, where it said easy on it and you pushed it and you're like, wow, that was easy. Yet you pushed it and something just happened. Me and Robin actually refer to that as being snappy. Yeah. Like we wish we could, if like it's been a long night and we want to just get home and get un, in our pajamas and comfy clothes and like get laid out on the couch or the chair with some coffee. We're like, we just want to be snappy and get it over with. Or some of you may refer to it as the easy button. So the easy button is one. The second one is the snooze button. So raise your hand. If you would choose the easy button, raise your hand. Okay. Now, if you would choose the snooze button, raise your hand. Okay. It's about half and half. How many of you raise your hands for both? Okay. <laughs> That's what I thought. So the easy button while, while it would be totally awesome to have an easy button, wouldn't would it not? Yeah. Um, especially for us with kids, right? And us with, uh, like, that are supervisors at work and stuff like that, that have tough stuff to do at work. Would that not be awesome to have an easy button and, like, be able to push it and that person that you need to have a talk with and fire is gone and you don't even have to deal with it, right? Okay. It's not real, though. But the snooze button is very real. It is very real physically, and guess what? It's very real spiritually too. Amen? Yeah. Very real spiritually. So before we get to the main text, I wanna, I, wanna, I wanna show you guys something here. This is, when God showed me this, I was like, wow. Open your Bibles to Mark 14, or go back to Mark 14, um, and you guys go ahead and stand with me if you're able. This is going to be, I'm, we're, I'm just reading this text to set it up, and then we'll dive into the main text here in just a minute, okay? You guys there? Everybody got your place? Mark 14. Oh, I guess I could tell you that. 32 through 42 is where we're going to look at. Mark 14, 32 through 42. 
And if you're there, say amen. amen. Okay. It says, then they came to a place named Gethsemane. Gethsemane. I knew I was going to struggle with that. He told his disciples, sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John with him, you know, the inner circle. And he began to, and he became, and he began to deeply distressed. Oh, he began to be deeply distressed and horrified. So you guys know where we're at right now in, in the life of Jesus, right? It's the night before his arrest, his betrayal, and his crucifixion. It is that night where they're about to come and arrest him and take him away. And so he's got his disciples. He took all of his disciples to the garden of Gethsemane, uh, which Gethsemane, in case you guys didn't know, means pressing. It's a garden where it was a, literally like an olive garden, wine, a grape garden. And it's where like pressing would happen, where you press out the juice of grapes and olives and stuff like that, make olive oil and wine. Okay. So it's fitting that he would go there on this pressing night of his life, right? Mm -hmm. He began to, he said to them, my soul is swallowed up in sorrow to the point of death. Remain here and what? Stay, Stay, Stay awake. awake. Then he went a little further, fell to the ground, and began to pray that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him or the cup might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but what you will. Then he came and he found them sleeping. Simon, are you sleeping? He asked Peter. Couldn't you stay awake one hour? Stay awake and pray so that you won't enter into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Once again, he went away and prayed, saying the same thing. And he came again and found them sleeping. Guess what? They pushed the spiritual snooze button. Because they could not keep their eyes open. And what that means right there where it says they could not keep their eyes open, it means their eyes were weighed down. And don't you know that what things in life that happen that weigh you down can make you very sleepy, right? Like all you want to do is go to sleep. That's where the disciples were at right here. They, do, they did not know what to say to him. So he, he called them out and they're like, Jesus, we got no, I got no excuses. I just fell asleep. Are you, uh, where are we at? 41. 41. Then he came a third time and said to them. So he went away and prayed again, came back. Are you still sleeping and resting? Enough. The time has come. Look, the son of man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let's go. See, my betrayer is near. Lord God, I thank you so much for your word. And as we dive deeper into your word and what exactly this means for us, Lord, Lord, I just pray that your Holy Spirit speak right now, that I decrease and that you increase and that your Holy Spirit take over these words of mine, this message, and it mix it with the hearts of people right now that are listening, people right now that are watching, and that we don't just hear these words, that we can etch them on our hearts and be changed by your message for us, Lord. I love you and thank you, and it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You guys have a seat. So how many of you, how many of you, this was the question that I posed on, it was similar to the question I posed on Facebook. Okay, the question on Facebook was, how many times do you hit the snooze button a day? Okay, and I got a lot of answers. Like, it was crazy to me how many answers I got between Instagram and Facebook. But how many of you actually get up on the first ring of your alarm. How many of you actually do that? Raise your hands. Okay, nobody raised their hands. Um, there were actually quite a few when, when people replied to me, um, there were quite a few that said that they hit their, their snooze button zero times. I think a lot of people are lying when they said that or they, they actually don't even have their alarm go off or anything like that. Um, yeah, some people don't even have an alarm, but um, so because, of, because none of you raised your hands, how many of your phones actually look like this? <laughs> that's a real picture of my phone. No, I'm joking. That's not a real picture of my phone because I don't. During the, I don't get up that early for one. Yes, exactly. But that actually used to be very similar to what my phone looked like when I actually uh, set my alarm and actually got up to actually go into an office for you know an actual job because you know I don't have a job. 
Um, <laughs> right? That actually is what my, similar to what my alarm clock. I used to have like alarm set every five minutes or 10 minutes so that, and you know what? I hit the snooze on every single every one of them. Single. So I was like, it would go off in five minutes. I would hit the snooze and then it would go off another, because the snooze button, you know, it's like nine minutes long, right? Which is a weird number to me. And then so it would go off again in five minutes and then it would go off again in four minutes and then it would go off again. And so it was constantly going off and Robin hated me. Like she hated me for that. Um, that's just really funny. I, I just thought that was a real funny picture because a lot of you are convicted right now that your alarm clocks look like that, don't aren't you? Yeah, okay. Um, I used to actually love me a good snooze button. I did. You can ask Robin. Um, I still kind of do. I actually made it a point this morning because I do wake up to an alarm on Sunday mornings and I did remember, I did vividly remember waking up and hitting the snooze on my phone one time, but then I got up the second time. No, I didn't get up the second time. So <laughs> anyway, but I used to love, I used to love a good snooze button, but now I don't really care for them. I, I don't, even though I just hit one this morning and I just told myself about on that. Um, but really the only reason why I still love mine is because now during the week, my snooze button is my wife. So I have to love her. <laughs> yeah. Like she comes in and she'll, she'll say it's time to get up. And I'm like, yeah, okay, okay, okay I'm getting up snooze. <laughs> I don't actually hit my wife. I'm just let <laughs> make that clear, okay? Um, but anyway, <laughs> um, the point is, we all love our snooze buttons. Most of us do, right? The thing is that spiritually, the snooze button is not a good thing. Just like we saw in the disciples here, okay? And I'm going to get into seeing, I'm going to get in and show you exactly what this means for us, because we may look at that text and say, okay, that text doesn't really apply to us, which there's a lot in that text that you can actually dig out and apply to us. But he's talking to the disciples. It's the night of his betrayal. They're in a garden. They're weighed down with the pressure of them losing their savior and losing their Messiah. And so there's a lot in that text that we could look at and say, that doesn't really apply to us. But do you know, there's many calls in the Bible to wake up many calls, right? And I'm going to show you here in just a minute in that uh, verse in Romans that that is actually applied to us. And I'll show you what these snooze buttons are, okay? Um, but today, my prayer is that you don't leave here looking at the snooze button the same. That you don't look at the snooze button the same. Because I haven't. And when I started, when he laid this on my heart and I started studying this, I grew a hatred for the snooze button. I did. Physically, and I know Robin already had a hatred for the snooze button, even though she hits hers three times in the uh, morning. I don't know if you guys saw that on, the, on Facebook. But anyway, <laughs> but today we're looking at something. We're looking at what I call spiritual snooze buttons. Spiritual snooze buttons. Because we all have these. And we all push them. Mm -hmm. Amen? Look at somebody. I want you guys to look at somebody right now and, and tell them loudly, stop snoozing. Stop. Oh, come on. You can do better than that. Stop snoozing. Do it like you're an alarm clock. <laughs> okay so this account of the disciples it, i used to find it a little funny but yet a little fascinating anybody of you, any of you guys ever uh, found this account of the disciples a little bit funny yeah a little bit funny yeah. when i when i like when i first started studying that first started reading that I, I found it a little bit funny uh i mean literally the disciples fell asleep on the job anybody ever been there before <laughs> I know for a fact Kyle <laughs> so um, I actually I have to tell us I have to tell on myself you know because this whole series is going to be about me telling on myself because this is something I really have an issue with is waking up and snooze buttons and all of this stuff um, when I was in high school uh, I was in I believe it was biology it may have been chemistry I can't remember but it was a science class and how many of you science puts you to sleep okay a few of you um, well, you, how many of you, uh, is this still the same in school today where they have in, in your science classes, those thick black tables, like gray tables, like they're really thick, about that thick. They almost look like concrete, but they're not. You guys know what I'm talking about? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Okay. Well, I was in class one morning and it was like one of my first class periods. And, um, we were, we were at these tables and we were set up in groups and, I think we were watching something on, we were watching some video or something, I don't know. Well, I was, I was actually sitting there and I fell asleep and I fell asleep like this right here. 
okay, with my hand, my hand in my hands. Do you know what happened? You guys know what's coming next? Have you ever fallen asleep and the next thing you know, you're like, your head's falling? My head fell and smacked on that table. I was so embarrassed. It woke me up. I, I, I woke up like that. Um, and then I had like a red mark and a, and a welt on my head the whole rest of the day. And people gave me a hard time the rest of the day. But anyway, the point is, that's why that's part of the reason why I find this story funny is because this is literally the disciples right here. They're falling asleep on the job. Yeah. Okay. But they also literally fell asleep on the Savior. Mm -hmm. Now, anybody ever been there before? Yeah. If you haven't fallen asleep on the job or fallen asleep in school, anybody ever fallen asleep on the Savior? Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, we all say yes to that, right? So this account should not only, it's not only funny and fascinating to me, but it's also very saddening and very sobering to me. Because if it was easy for the disciples to fall asleep in the physical presence of Jesus, how much easier is it for us to fall asleep yeah. in our spiritual state yeah. when we don't even have Jesus right here in front of us physically face to face? It's so much easier, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's almost as if they were slapping the spiritual snooze button on Jesus in his face. Mm -hmm. We do the same thing, That's right? right? Unfortunately, we hit the spiritual snooze button on the Savior way too often as well. And so I'm gonna, we're going to dig into uh, the Romans verses right here because I want to show you guys something that, about spiritual snooze buttons. Spiritual snooze buttons, they keep you sleeping and stop you from serving. If you've ever had a spiritual snooze button... And we all have them, and I'm about to show you what they are, and they're going to stomp on all of your toes because they stomped on all my toes. You guys ready to have your toes stomped on? I hope you wore your steel toe boots in here, or Robin calls them your teal toes. Um, I think she just calls them that because she likes the word, she likes the color teal. But th this is so needed in our in our in our churches, in America, in our families. We need to stop hitting the steer spiritual snooze button, okay? Yep. And parents, I'm about to talk. I'm about to talk to you guys for a minute, parents. Sometimes you guys are your kids' alarm clocks. Don't let them hit your spiritual snooze button, okay? Don't. Like Robin, she comes in, she is my alarm clock, and I hit the snooze button on her all the time. Parents, you're your kids' spiritual alarm clock. Yeah. I say that, but you really should just be waking your kids up to their own spiritual alarm clock. Oh, man, can I get an amen for that? Because if they rely on you to be their spiritual alarm clock, guess what happens when they get older and they don't have you as their spiritual alarm clock anymore? They ain't going to get up to it, right? Okay, so we need to stop hitting the spiritual snooze button because snoozing keeps us asleep and it keeps us from serving. Amen? What exactly is this, our spiritual snooze buttons? I know you guys are all asking that right now, right? I'm glad you asked. Look at with me in Romans 13, 11 through 14. Let's dive in and see how this applies to us. Let's go. You guys ready? Yep. yep. Okay. Romans 13, 11 through 14. This is Paul writing to a church, writing to a church, right? So the church should be spiritually awake, right? Yeah. Yeah. Should be. He says, besides this, knowing the time is already the hour for you to... Let me, let me hear you guys say it louder than that. Wake up. Wake up. For our now our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. The night is nearly over and the daylight is near. So let us discard the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk with decency as in the daylight, not carousing, not in carousing and drunkenness, not in sexual impurity and promiscuity promiscuity, not in quarreling and jealousy. Can I get an amen for that one right there? Because you may not, you guys may not deal with carousing and drunkenness. You may not deal with sexual impurity and promiscuity, but I guarantee you, all of you have dealt with quarreling and jealousy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And it's time to wake up from that, but put on, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no plans to satisfy fleshly desires. Mm -hmm. Church, this is written to a church. It's written to the Roman church, which the Roman church, a church at Rome, um, had an issue with satisfying themselves. 
And are we not in a nation and a time and a generation where we are all about satisfying ourselves? Okay, so we need to wake up to these truths because satisfying yourselves is just hitting the spiritual snooze button. Okay, so here's what we see. Spiritual snoozes. I'm looking at spiritual snoozes that Satan uses. I, I worked real hard to get that to rhyme. So you guys can go ahead and say amen to me there, right? Spiritual snoozes that Satan uses. Okay, you guys ready to see this? Number one. He uses the snooze button of sleepiness. Snooze button of sleepiness. Isn't this the number one reason why we hit snooze buttons? Is because you're still sleepy, right? You want to stay asleep, right? It's the number one reason why we hit snooze buttons. And don't you think that spiritually the enemy knows this? Do you guys think that? Okay, he does. He knows where your weaknesses are. And if he knows you have a, a problem staying up too late and being sleepy in on Sunday mornings, guess what? He's going to use that. And he's going to try to get you to stay sleepy and to hit the spiritual snooze button, right? He uses the tactic of time. He uses the tactic of time. And I know you guys are probably like, what in the world are you talking about, right? Here's what, here's what happens when you hit the spiritual snooze button. Snoozing actually keeps you unaware of the time. If you've ever hit a snooze button before, you know what I'm talking about. You hit the snooze button, and the next thing you know, you've hit the snooze button three, four, or five times, and next thing you know, it's 45 minutes after the time you were supposed to wake up, and now you're going to have to hurry and run and get ready for work, right? Anybody ever been there before? Okay. Um, that's exactly what Satan does. He tries to keep us unaware of what time it is, unaware of the time in your life, unaware of the time in Christ Christianity, unaware of the time in American uh, church, right? Yeah. That's why Paul writes this, besides this. So what is besides this? He just got done talking about, do not owe anything to anyone except for to love one another. He says, you can keep all the commandments, but if you want to keep all the commandments, just do it by this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength, and love each other as yourself. And he says, besides this, knowing the time, it's already the hour for you to wake up. So physically speaking, the point of the snooze button is to give you more time, right? Mm -hmm. That's exactly why we hit the snooze button, because we want more time. We want more time to sleep, right? Do you not know Satan wants you in that same place spiritually? He wants you thinking you have more time than you really have. Do you know, church, we don't have as much time as we think we have until Jesus comes back. That's right. Amen. That's right. So that besides knowing this, besides knowing that it's time to love each other and love each other as yourself and love the Lord your God, thought, put him number one in your life. It is now the hour to wake up and stop hitting the spiritual snooze button. That's right. In reality, the snooze button doesn't really add more time to anything. Did you know that? It doesn't. In fact, it actually takes away time to do anything. Because next thing you know, you've lost all this time that you could have been awake. And you could have been working. And you could have been getting ready. And you could have been doing stuff. You could have been taking care of stuff around the house. Same thing spiritually. When you hit the snooze button, it keeps you completely oblivious to the hour that it is. I know I used to get in trouble all the time for... Waking, not waking up and hitting the snooze button all the time and stuff. And I'm, I literally would wake up and be like, I don't, I didn't know what time it was. And now that I'm awake, I know what time it is. Did you not see Satan wants us in that same exact place? Yeah. Huh? So we got to get rid of hitting the snooze button of sleepiness. Spiritually speaking, this actually does the same exact thing. It's as if we want to tell God, give me five more minutes, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Give me five more minutes to, before I serve you. Give me five more minutes before I teach. Give me five more minutes before I do this for you. Give me five more minutes before I give to the church. Give me five more minutes before I walk across the street and tell somebody about Jesus. Give me five more minutes because I need my sleep, right? Why are we telling God, give me more time? The time is now to wake up. Stop hitting the snooze button of sleepiness. Before I start serving, before I start giving, before I start teaching, before I start reading the word, before I start doing what you want me to do, we got to stop telling him to give me five more minutes. And we got to wake up on that first alarm clock. Right. Amen? We don't need more time because the more time we want from God, guess what? The more time we're giving the enemy. Mm. Satan wants us to slap the spiritual snooze button in the midst of our spiritual slumber. 
That's all Satan wants us to do. Because when you're saved, he can't take that from you. But he can make you hit the spiritual snooze button. Yep. And that makes you ineffective. Remember what I said at the beginning? It keeps you sleeping and stops you from serving. Yep. That's what Satan wants. we got to quit telling God, give me more time. God says the time is to wake up and perk up. Wake up and perk up. Right? What time is it? Wake up. Wake up and perk up. Okay? It's time to wake up. What's the occasion for this urgency that Paul is writing? We know the time. Do you guys know the time spiritually? Do you know the time in the history of Jesus? Do you know what time it is? It's almost time for him to come back, right? We are living in the last days. I guarantee you we are living in the last days. Okay? I've seen so many people still try to, like, narrow down the, the day and the time and the year that Jesus is coming back. You can't do it because he says no man knows the hour. Only right. the Father knows the hour. And when the Father says, that's when he's going to come. Right? right? But I believe we are in the last days. I believe that in our generation, Jesus will come back. Wow. All you got to do is look around the world and look at all the signs that point to it, right? Yeah. Even if you don't believe that, you should believe that because that will get you working and get you moving and get you knowing the time and keep you from spiritually snoozing, right? Yeah. So we need to treat it like it's the time, right? Yeah. Yeah. We know what hour it is. We're in the last days. We're in the last hours. The hour is here for us to wake up and smell the coffee. I had to throw a coffee in there. <laughs> this is actually the tactic that Robin uses to get me up now. Did you know that? Because I keep, I, I keep hitting the spiritual snooze button on her, and it always ha it never fails. She'll come in, and she'll be like, babe, coffee's ready. And guess what? That props me up, and I'm like, oh, coffee, let's go. <laughs> right? It's time. So not only is it time to wake up, it's time to perk up. Yeah. Or as in Arkansas, as we say, it's time to buck up. Yeah. Right? Bye. Amen, guys? Yeah. Are my Arkansas guys, my hunting guys, it's time to buck up, right? <laughs> Salvation is nearer than when we first believed. Yeah. That's what Paul says there. Salvation is nearer than first when we first believed. What does salvation mean? I, you're probably like, I thought I was already saved, so how can salvation be nearer, right? Salvation literally means to rescue or to deliver from danger, okay? And salvation is in one name and one name alone, amen? Can I get amen, amen for that? Amen. That name is Jesus, right? That's right. Salvation happens at the moment you first believe, right? Yes. yes. You guys agree with me, right? The moment you believe and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, right? That's what it says in Romans 10, 9 through 10. If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. That is salvation, right? One believes with the heart resulting in righteousness and one confesses with the mouth resulting in salvation. So what does Paul mean right here that salvation is nearer than the time when we first believed? It's really interesting because... Did you know there are levels to our salvation? There's levels to our salvation. There's actually different tenses to our salvation too, okay? You have the past tense salvation, which is what I just preached on right there. If you've confessed with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believed in your heart that he is Lord, then you were saved. You are saved, right? right. That, is, that is saved from the penalty of sin. Amen? Can I get an amen for being amen. saved from the penalty of amen. sin? Amen. Yeah. That's what we call justification. Because what happens there is God makes it just as if you never sinned. Jesus makes it just as if you never sinned. So God can look at you and say, you really are a dirty, rotten scoundrel. But Jesus says, I got him covered with my blood. Amen. Amen, Amen. Amen for that. And this, we, in this salvation, we experience the promise of heaven. So that secures you. You know you're going to heaven at that moment, okay? Then you have the present salvation, which is the area that we're all in right now. Okay, this is where we're growing in our salvation presently. Okay, this means that you are saved from the power of sin. And this is what we call sanctification. So this is where God works on you daily, hourly, weekly, monthly. Sometimes for you, it's second by second, right? For me, it's second by second, where he is sanctifying you and cleansing you of your past stuff and your the dirty things that you do. And this is, this is where we experience the preparation for heaven. So you've already experienced the promise of heaven. Now he's preparing you for heaven. Now he's preparing you to spend eternity with him. Okay? That's the present tense salvation. And then we have a future tense salvation. Can I get an amen for the future tense salvation? 
this is me. This is when you we're going to experience being saved from the presence of sin. So you've already been saved from the penalty of sin. You're working on being saved from the power of sin in your life. And in the future, when Jesus comes back, we are going to be experiencing the absence and being saved from the presence of sin. Amen. Amen. There will be no more sin when Jesus comes back. There will be no sin because he's taking us with him. Right? right? And then when he comes back to set up his millennial reign, there will be no sin. That's right. Amen. There will be no death. There will be no sickness. There will be no darkness. We'll be living in the light of Jesus. Amen. We won't even need the sunshine anymore. Amen. Amen. That's the future salvation that he's talking about right here. Paul is saying that our ultimate deliverance and great glorification is right around the corner. If it was right around the corner in 50 AD when he was writing this to the Romans, guess what? It's even more right around the corner right now, right? right? Yep. Jesus is quickly coming back to get his bride. Darkness is disappearing and daylight is dawning, so it's time to quit hitting snooze because you're sleepy. It is time to wake up on that alarm clock. Amen? Amen. We need to wake up, wake up, and quit sleeping. We need to wake up from our sleep. And watch out for our Savior. Because mm. he's coming. Amen. Amen. Yep. How many do you guys ever like just look up over at the eastern sky mm -hmm. and just be like, Jesus, come quickly. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. The more that the more we grow and the more that uh, this world becomes how it is, I find myself doing that more and more often. I look up over at the eastern sky and I'm like, Jesus, Lord, come quick, please. I, for one, I don't want to die. <laughs> for one, I just want to experience Jesus coming back and taking me up, right? I don't want to experience my kids going through anything like that. I'm just ready for him to come. I'm ready for him to come quickly. Amen. Amen. The second snooze button that Satan uses is the snooze button of sinfulness. Snooze button of sinfulness. Look at it with me again in verse 12. It says, the night is nearly over and the daylight is near. So let us discard the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk with decency as in the daylight, not carousing in and drunkenness, not, excuse me, <laughs> not in sexual impurity and promiscuity, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus. You might not think of a snooze button as being sinful, like a physical snooze button, right? You guys, anybody think that a snooze button is sinful? Like you hit the snooze button is sinful? I hope not because I just did it this morning. <laughs> but spiritually speaking, guess what? It is. Yeah. It's a sin to hit your spiritual snooze button. Okay? And that's what Satan wants you to do. We have multiple commands in the Bible to wake up. And don't you know the enemy knows just how to keep you asleep? He does. And every time you have a temptation... And you give in to that temptation, whether it is a sexual temptation, whether it is a temptation to drink, whether it's a temptation to smoke, whether it's a temptation to look at something, whether it's a temptation to say something, go somewhere you shouldn't go. Every time you give in to that temptation, guess what? The devil just made you hit that spiritual snooze button. And so we got to quit hitting the snooze button of sinfulness. And he uses the tactic of temptation every single time. Snoozing keeps you unawake with temptation. It keeps you unawake with temptation. Guess what? Physically speaking, the point of hitting the snooze button is to keep you soft and cozy under your sheets and covers, right? Because you don't want to get up out of that warmth of your sheets and your covers, the covers of night, right? Yep. And you don't want the, the daylight coming through the windows. You want to keep the room dark and you want to hit that snooze button and just get a little bit more sleep, right? That's a temptation. That's the temptation that we experience when we want to hit that snooze button, right? We want nothing more than to stay wrapped up in the warm, dark, comfy clothes and covering of night. The temptation entices you to slap the snooze button and stay asleep. Spiritually speaking, <clears throat> Satan wants the same thing. He wants the same thing. There's a reason why it's referred to as the deeds of darkness, right? Yeah. Have you ever heard the, the saying, the, the, the phrase, that nothing good happens after midnight? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. I've, I, I tried to look up what, exa- what exactly that saying was, and I saw a lot where it's um, nothing, ha- nothing good happens after 2 a.m., but I think, uh, personally, I think nothing good happens after midnight. Honestly, that's just me, because I've been out after midnight a lot of times, and I wouldn't get into anything good, right? If you're out of your house after midnight, then there's nothing good happening, especially if you're in Walmart. There's really nothing good happening in Walmart after midnight. Um, but sin and darkness are synonymous. They are. Sin happens in darkness. Sin doesn't happen in the light, Right? Because guess what? God is light. And in God, there is no sin, right? And so all light does is exposes sin. So it exposes the darkness because sin happens in the darkness. That's why in John 13 or 3, 19 through 21, uh, we see this. This then is the judgment. Light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. That's the deeds of darkness that he's talking about right here. For everyone who practices wicked things hates the light and avoids it so that his deeds may not be exposed. But anyone who lives by the truth comes to the light so that his works may be shown to be accomplished by God. The enemy wants you comfy and cozy under the cover of corruption. He wants you satisfied in your sin. He wants you, because you know, I made a statement a while back. The reason why so many people have a hard time getting away from their sin, you know why? Because sin is fun and they like it too much, right? And it's harder to get away from it. It's easier to be drawn to it. That's the same exact temptation that Satan uses. He uses it to draw you to the spiritual button of sinfulness. And when you hit that spiritual button of sinfulness, guess what? You're not serving the Savior, right? right? The enemy wants you comfy and cozy. He wants you comfy and cozy in carousing and drunkenness. And so if you guys may not know what that means, I I, I put a little term on here to kind of give you an idea of what those two terms mean. Carousing and drunkenness literally just means living it up. Living it up in the night. Living it up in your life. Doing what you please. Doing whatever feels good to you. That's exactly what he's talking about here when he's talking about carousing and drunkenness, right? He's saying cast those deeds off because there's there's no room for those deeds in the light. Right. And then he says sexual impurity and promiscuity. And so those two terms literally mean sleeping around. He doesn't want us living it up. He doesn't want us sleeping around. Amen. And then the last ones, quarreling and jealousy. <laughs> I'm about to stomp on some toes here. The term that he gave me for this one is literally stirring the pot. Mm. That's stirring the pot. That is stirring the pot on Facebook, on social media within your lives and your family, if you're doing anything to stir the pot and get people riled up and get people quarreling and get people jealous, like, look at me, look what I've done, then you're, you're hitting the spiritual snooze button of sinfulness. Amen. And that's exactly where Satan wants us. But God, God doesn't want us there, right? That's why Paul writes, cast those things off, get them far away from you. Quit reaching for them and putting them back on. Quit reaching for that spiritual snooze button of sinfulness, right? Yeah. God says the time is to get rid and get ready instead. It's time to get rid of those things and get ready. What time is it? Get rid and get ready. Time to get rid and get ready. The temptation is to stay concealed in the veil of night. That's what the temptation is. That's why God, that's why Satan makes sin seem so fun because he wants us given in to that temptation. God says there's much more of a reward when you avoid those things, those temptations, right? And avoid those sins and give him the time, right? Because remember, the time is near, the time is now. The temptation is to stay comfy under the covers and clothes of night. But God calls us children of the light. We got to get rid of the clothes. We got to get rid of the comfort of the night because we are children of the light. That's what it says in 1 Thessalonians 5, 5. Paul writes this, For you are all children of the light, children of the day. We are not of the night and not of darkness. Snooze buttons are designed to put off waking up. Is what, that's what snooze buttons are for. That's exactly what Satan uses sin for. To put off waking up to the things of God, right? And what Paul says here, Paul is, um, Paul is encouraging 
us to put off the temptation to hit the snooze button by putting off these temptations, yeah. right? Instead of putting off the time to wake up, put off the temptation to stay asleep. How do we do this? Practically speaking, how do we do this? Number one, get rid of influence, whatever influences you to live it up. Plain and simple. If there's an influence in your life that is influencing you to live it up and do what you want, do as you please and not as God pleases, you got to get rid of it. That's what putting it off means. If it's a friend, if it's a family member, if it's a coworker, if it is a, a TV show, if it is some music, whatever it is, if it's influencing you to live it up, get rid of it. Get rid of what influences you to sleep around. Get rid of it. Get rid of whatever influences you to stir the pot. We got to get rid of these things. Amen? Amen. You guys toes feeling okay out there? Okay. This could be in the form of friends, music, movies, social media, technology, news, etc. You know what your you know what your temptation is. You know what it is, what influences you to do certain things, right? Get rid of it. If it influences you to do any of those things and to, to, to keep grabbing for the temptation, get rid of it. Sometimes we just have to make a decision. We got to stop praying for God to get rid of things in our lives. And we actually have to take the step to get rid of it, right? right? Because God already wants you to avoid those things, right? We don't have to pray for God to make you avoid those things because it's clear in his word he wants you to do that. Right. Sometimes there's just some decisions we have to make to avoid those things, right? right? Yep. That's what Paul's talking about here. Much like your cozy bed, your comfy PJs, none of those things that I just mentioned are innately bad. They're not. Music, it's not innately bad. It's not just bad in general, right? Movies, friends, they're not bad things. But Satan knows how to use the temptation of those things to be bad influences in your life. Just like your comfort of your, your sheets and your covers and the darkness of the room at night when you want to go hit that snooze button and sleep a little bit longer, those things aren't bad. In fact, I can't wait till I get into the covers of my bed, right? And I get to like just snuggle all the land and like get all, you know, anybody else feel that way? Okay. You guys are probably thinking that right now. Like, shut up so I can go get in my covers. Um, those things aren't bad. But the temptation that they cause you to hit the snooze button, that's what's bad. And that's what Satan uses, the temptation, the tactic of temptation. We got to get rid of the temptation to stay in our sin. But Paul takes it a step further. Not only does he say it's time to get rid of those things, it's time to get ready. Mm. It's time to get ready. Even though you get rid of those things, you still got to get ready. Yeah. Right? right? It does no good to get out of bed and then go straight to the couch or chair, which is normally what I do, right? <laughs> How many of you guys actually like get up on your first alarm clock and you actually get up and you get immediately get to getting ready? Not because you're running so late, not because you like got to be in school in five minutes or at work in five minutes, because that you have to get immediately getting ready. But how many of you wake up in the morning and you have like an hour, hour and a half to spare and you get right to getting ready? Not a single person, right? Oh, Jenna. OK. Hey, that's impressive. Um, no, most of us go straight to I know for me, it's my chair. I know for Robin, it's my chair, too. Um, and guess what happens? The temptation creeps right in. And next thing you know, you find yourself dozing off. My kids do this every morning, <laughs> right? Because I wake up and they're already awake. They've already had their breakfast and they're both out on the couch in the love seat. And the next thing I know, like two minutes after I've gotten up, alarm clocks are going off again and they're hitting snooze buttons again. Actually, I think they just dismiss them. But um, anyway, the point is, the point is that just because you get rid of the comfort of your sheets and covers and the darkness of night doesn't mean the temptation is gone away, right? right? Yeah. You still have to do some things to get ready, yeah. right? Yeah. The first step in getting out of bed is getting rid. We have to get rid of the temptation to stay in our bed. Actually, I already read that. My bad. Um, in the same way, Paul says that if you get rid without getting ready, you leave your wide, yourself wide open to the temptation of being rocked back to sleep. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Sadly, this is the very problem in most Christians in the American church. Yeah. This is the problem. That we've, we've woken up 
We've gotten rid of some things, right? Amen? Say amen if you've gotten rid of some things. Amen. Okay, those of you that didn't say amen, you got some work to do. I'm joking. I'm not really. You really do need to. But we've gotten rid of some things. We've woken up and got rid of some things. But you still have to get ready. You still have to do some things, right? And the whole time that we're getting rid, but we're not getting ready, you're leaving yourself wide open for Satan to come in and rock you right back to sleep. Right. That's where we are in the churches. The churches are not, the Amer America, our families, our churches, we're not getting ready like we should be, right? Yep. When you rid yourself, but you don't fill yourself, guess what you just do? You empty yourself. That's all you do. Yep. If you rid yourself of things, but then you don't fill yourself with something else, all you've done is emptied yourself. Amen? Yeah. And guess what happens when you just stay empty? It leaves it wide open for somebody else, something else to come in and fill you up. And doesn't the enemy know that? We have to replace what we rid with what gets us ready. We have to replace what we rid with what gets us ready. What gets us ready? Okay, yeah. Amen. Jesus. How do you get ready with Jesus? His word, prayer, serving. Preaching, teaching, I'm not saying all of you are preachers, but I mean, you really need to literally preach to your kids, right? Amen. Amen. Paul says, put on the armor of light and walk in decency as in the light. Put on the armor of light. What is the armor of light? It's the armor of God, right? Truth, righteousness, faith, peace. I can't think of the rest of them. <laughs> I, should, I should know those by heart, shouldn't I? Um, anyway, he wants us, this means putting on the full armor of God and walking as, get this, weapons of righteousness. Mm -hmm. Instead of being a weapon of unrighteousness, we got to be weapons of righteousness. That means you're literally a gun for Jesus. Amen? You're literally... You, well, you're, you're a gun for uh, one of two things. You're either a gun of Satan or you're a gun of Jesus, right? How many of you are walking around blasting for Jesus? Oh, that means we got to get ready. We, got, we can get rid of stuff all day long, but we got to get ready. Amen? Do what? She's picturing. Okay. <laughs> this means ridding of the world and replacing with the word. This means ridding of self and replacing with the spirit. Mm. This means ridding of the dark and replacing with the light. It's time to quit hitting the snooze button. That's right. We got to quit hitting the snooze button. Amen. 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 First John 1 7 says, but if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. That's actually the youth group verse. We got to walk as children of the light. Walk as weapons of the light. Amen? Yeah. We need to get rid of sin and get ready with the Savior. Mm -hmm. We've got to get rid of sin and get ready with the Savior. Okay? The third snooze button. I'm not getting as many amens for that point. <laughs> the third snooze button is the snooze button of selfishness. So we have the snooze, snooze button of sleepiness, the snooze button of sinfulness. Now we have the snooze button of selfishness. And don't you know that here we have the main motive for hitting the snooze button? We do. It's the main motive we all have for hitting snooze. Again, the enemy knows this and will do anything he can to entice you. And in doing that, he actually uses the tactic of what I call the temporary. He uses the tactic of temporary. Because you know why? Snoozing keeps you unmoved in the temporary. It keeps you unmoved from getting out of bed in the temporary self-enjoyment of being in bed, right? Mm -hmm. Physically speaking, the temporary self-satisfaction of staying asleep is really what keeps you staying put and smacking the snooze button. Mm -hmm. That is really, that's literally what it comes down to. I want to stay asleep, so I'm going to hit the snooze button, right? I'm enjoying staying asleep, so I'm going to hit the snooze button. Spiritually speaking, we find the same exact thing, right? We get so stuck in the enticing of temporary enjoyment 
that we too often snooze God's deployment. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again for the people in the back. Can I get an amen from the people in the back? Yeah. We get so stuck in the enticing of temporary enjoyment. You know what temporary enjoyment is? Right here, right now, this world that we live in. Satisfying the desires of the flesh. Satisfying the desires of your heart. Satisfying the desires of the pride of life. That's what we get. We get so wrapped up in, and Satan wants us stuck in the temporary. Right. He wants us looking at our, where we're at right now, right here, right now, and being so enticed by the enjoyment of what we're going through right now that we snooze God's deployment of his people, right? Yeah. We got to stop doing that. We got to stop hitting the snooze button. God says, the time is now to get dressed and get to work. Get dressed and get to work. Get dressed and get to work, right? What time is it? Time to get dressed and get to work. It's time to get dressed. Anybody in here actually get out of the house to go to work or school? Raise your hand if you actually get out of the house to go to work or school. Okay? Now, when you do that, most of us know what to wear when, right? Right? You guys know that you don't wear pajamas to work, right? I, I mean, some people wear pajamas to Walmart. Yeah, but, and I don't know, do some kids wear pajamas to school? Sometimes? Um, we, yeah, our kids don't. You're not supposed to wear pajamas to school, just saying that, okay? You're not supposed to wear pajamas anywhere really outside of your house. I mean, I wear my pajamas when I drive to take the kids to school, but I don't ever get out of my truck, so that's different, right? <laughs> it is different. I'm just saying. It's, it's different. <laughs> but we know what to wear and when to wear, right? You don't wear pajamas to work. You don't take a shower in your suit or your dress. You don't wear blue jeans to bed, right? I mean, unless you have a reason to wear blue jeans to bed, like you don't know what time it is and you've lost all sense of you've gotten caught up in the carousing and drunkenness, then people wear blue jeans to bed, right? But again, that goes back to the whole point. You shouldn't be in that place where you're wearing blue jeans to bed. Just saying, okay? <laughs> Night clothes and day clothes are not the same. They serve different functions, right? Yeah. Paul says to remove the robe of night and dress for the daylight. That's what he says there when he says, get rid of the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no plans to satisfy your selfish desires. In other words, remove the rags of your former self. The rags of your former, because you guys know we all used to wear rags, right? Before Jesus brought us riches, right? You, went, you literally went from rags to riches. But yet we keep trying to keep putting on the rags of our former self. And so Paul is saying, remove the rags of your former self and clothe yourself with Christ. Amen. Clothe yourself with Christ. When people look at us, when people look at you like you go to school or you go to work, they look at you and what do they see? They see the clothes you're wearing, right? So should they not look at us and see Christ? Should they not? They should. They should. That's, right. That's why Colossians says three in Colossians 3, 12 through 14, therefore God's chosen ones, holy in love, put on heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, accepting one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against you, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also forgive. Above all, so above all that stuff that you just put on, your overcoat, your top coat, put on love the perfect bond of unity when people look at you they should see you dressed in that stuff yeah. because that is the clothing of christ That's right. was he not all of those things yeah. did he not give you all of those things when you came to say salvation knowledge of him then we should clothe ourselves with those. That's why he says, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no plans to satisfy the selfish desires. To put on Christ literally means to become more like him. To become more like him. To receive by faith all that he has for our daily living. That's what literally putting on Christ means. We grow on the basis of the food we eat, right? This is why God warns us to make no provisions for the flesh. If we feed the flesh, guess what's going to happen? will fail. 
But if we feed the soul with the things of the spirit, guess what will happen? You'll succeed. That's where Satan starts using the tactic of the temporary. Because we get so satisfied in the temporary of our selfishness and the temporary of this world. And Paul, we got to get rid of that stuff. We got to quit putting that stuff on. Once we wake up, once we get up, once we get rid, once we get ready, and once we get dressed, so we've done all those things, right? Wake up, get up, get rid, get ready, get dressed. You still got something to do, right? You got to get to work, right? You can do all of those things, but all of those things, you can still be rocked back to sleep and still hit a spiritual snooze button, but you got to get to work. You still got to get there. You still got to do something. You still got to move, right? To get to work doesn't simply mean go to church. To get to work doesn't seem, simply mean to uh, get to heaven. To get to work doesn't simply mean to give everything you have. Actually, I got that wrong. It doesn't mean to go to church. Okay, amen? To get to work doesn't mean to just get to heaven and do nothing else. Mm -hmm. To get to work means to give everything you have to get everyone else on board with you to get to heaven. To give everything you have to get everyone else on board to get to church. Yeah. To get everything you have to get everyone else on board with serving him. Yeah. Right? Yeah. To get to work means to get into the word. Mm -hmm. To get to work means to get out of giving way to your flesh. Yeah. To get to work means to not give way to the gloom of the world around us. Right. We got a lot of work to do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Amen? That's a lot of stuff. But you know what? When you put on Christ, you can do anything that he calls you to do. That's right. You can do anything that he calls you to do. Amen? Amen. This world is not our home. Amen. Amen? amen. Can I get a bigger amen for that? This world is not our home. Amen. So don't get too comfortable here, is what he's saying. Don't get too comfortable in the temporary. Don't let Satan rock you to sleep in selfishness and using the tactic of temporary. Right. Hit the snoo don't hit the snooze button. Wake up. Get up. Get ready. Get dressed. Get to work. The reality is, Jesus is coming back. Right. And he's coming back soon. Amen. Amen? Right. This is another wake-up call. It's another alarm clock going off, right? Yeah. We have the alarm clocks going off all around us. Mm -hmm. Like I mentioned in last week's sermon. COVID, division, persecution, politics. Pretty soon there's going to be a world power that's going to come together over in the Middle East. A one world power. You ever, you ever heard of the New World Order? Pretty soon that's going to come together. All of these are wake-up calls. All of these are wake-up signs. All of these are wake-up signals. We got to get up and get ready and get dressed and get to work. Amen? Right. Unlike the disciples in the garden... Don't allow Satan to use the snooze buttons of sleepiness, sinfulness, and selfishness. Do you know that with the story that we looked at of the disciples in the garden, did you know Satan used those same snooze buttons on them? The same? They didn't know what time it was. He used the tactic of time. They didn't know that the hour was literally there that Jesus was getting betrayed. He used the tactic of sinfulness. That's why Jesus said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He used the tactic of temptation. They were so weighed down with the temporary things that they were going through that they were weighed down and their eyes got so heavy that they fell asleep. They, oh, that's, all, that's all they wanted to do was sleep it off. He used the same tactic then. He uses the same tactic now. Right. We got to stop hitting those snooze buttons. Stop allowing Satan to let us, to, to give us those snooze buttons to hit. Live in the light and the reality that Jesus is coming back because he is. Amen? Amen. Right. Because he's coming soon. Don't choose to snooze. We got to choose to be used. He's coming soon. Yeah. Right, man? Yeah, right. Don't choose to snooze. Choose to be used. Yeah. <laughs> I love the Brittany laughing. <laughs> now is the wake up call, right? Yeah. Um, as I close this, I'm not going to have a time of invitation, but you know where you're at. You know. If you're allowing Satan to use any of those snooze buttons on you, amen? Mm -hmm. 
Guess what? Rebel against the snooze button. That that all that that post that I put out there showed me. Did you know the average time that somebody hits the snooze button is like between three and four? That was about the average time. I, I did all the math and everything, and about everybody that res responded, the average time that the average person hits the snooze button is about three to four times. We just saw three spiritual snooze buttons there, yeah. and we've all been affected by those, right? Yeah. You know where you're at. You know if you've been hitting the snooze button on any of those, right? The time is now to quit. Yeah. Because you know what? I'm going to give you the title of next week's sermon already. That rarely happens. So <laughs> next week's sermon is Rise and Shine. We got to quit hitting the snooze button because it's time to rise and shine. Amen. Amen. Yeah. If you need to get up, if you need to, to make a decision for Christ, if you need to, if you haven't woken up to him in the very first place, if you haven't experienced that spiritual awakening that he has for you, now is the time, yeah. right? Yeah. The time has never been more important to wake up to the spiritual snooze, to wake up to the spiritual awakening that he has for you, right? right? If you need help stopping the spiritual snoozing, let me know. Come to me. Come to somebody. Go to a spiritual mentor, right? Yeah. If you want to join with this church, because I feel like this church is on the verge of waking up. Amen? Yeah. Amen. You guys feel like this church is on the verge of waking up? Amen. Is it just me? Yeah. No. Okay. Because I felt every single bit of this message. I felt every single bit of the revival that God has and before Jesus comes back. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Then if you want to join with us, Come to me. Let me know. Okay. Amen. Lord God, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you for your word, Lord. And I thank you for the ability to avoid the snooze buttons. Lord, if there's anybody struggling with one of those snooze buttons today or any snooze button, if anybody in here is snoozing on the Savior, I pray that they do whatever they can, whatever it takes to quit the snoozing today. Lord, when you get your whole entire army not snoozing on you, I can't even fathom the impact that we can have on the world around us, on the, the, the culture around us, the um, city around us, and the families around us. Lord, I can't even fathom it. And, but that's what you want. So, Lord, if there's anybody in here, I pray for them right now. I pray to, they get rid of the rags of the night and they get rid of the chains of bondage and they get rid of the spiritual snooze buttons and they wake up their Christianity to wake up to what you have, the call that you have for them. Lord, I love you and I thank you. And it's in Jesus' holy, precious name I pray. Amen. Amen.